Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time are you watching this program, but we welcome you and we thank you for joining us. As you know, we try to explain to you some religious English. I hope you still remember our guest. What is his name? Of course, Robert. Are you Robert? I am Robert still, oh. last time I checked. Okay. Today we are going to talk a little bit about the Holy Bible and the sacraments. I'm holding New American Bible. Dzisiaj chcemy porozmawiać troszeczkę o Piśmie Świętym. Trzymam teraz nową angielską Biblię, bo tak należy to tłumaczyć. Do we say the Bible or the Holy Scripture? Which word is the right one? Um, both are, are accurate. The Bible is what people say normally in conversation, but more formally, the Holy Scriptures. Mówimy, że to jest Pismo Święte. No Scripture, but Scriptures, yes? You can say it either way. Holy Scripture or the Holy Scriptures. Czyli możemy powiedzieć Pismo Święte, ale także w liczbie mnogiej. Pisma Święte. Obydwie formy są poprawne, ale tak w języku powszechnym mówimy Bible. Bible means Biblia. And the Bible consists of two testaments, yes? Mm -hmm. yes. Which ones? The Old Testament and the New Testament. Czyli mam Pismo Święte składa się ze Starego Testamentu i Nowego Testamentu. What do we have inside the Bible? Well, we have God's Word written. It's God communicating Himself through inspired writings by, uh, by prophets and apostles and many holy people of God. W Piśmie Świętym znajdujemy Słowo Boże. To jest Słowo, przez które Pan Bóg się z nami komunikuje. Ono ma też ludzkich autorów, czyli to byli wybrani, namaszczeni przez Pana Boga ludzie, którzy to Słowo przekazali. Is it advisable to read the Holy Bible? Yes, sir. we're um, enjoined by the Church to try to read at least some of the Scripture every day. Tak, powinniśmy czytać Pismo Święte i to y, codziennie. Why do a priest kiss the Holy Bible even at the pandemic time? Well, it's a, a sign of honor and veneration for anything through which uh, God uh, gives us His grace. It's a channel of grace to us. So we'll, we have uh, the Holy Bible, holy images sometimes. Uh, we kiss as well in veneration. So the Bible, because God's grace comes to us through the Bible. Pocałunek jest wielkim znakiem szacunku i miłości, ale także wdzięczności. I wspomniał, że nie tylko całujemy Pismo Święte, to jest pocałunek, można powiedzieć, złożony na sercu Pana Boga, ale także nieraz święte figury, obrazy i to są bardzo piękne gesty. Father, didn't uh, St. Augustine once say that uh, the Holy Scriptures are like love letters from God? So if you got a letter from someone you love, you might read the letter, kiss the letter, so it's the same way. Święty Augustyn powiedział, że to jest jak list od kogoś ukochanego. Jak macie list od ukochanego czy ukochanej, no dzisiaj to są maile, smsy, ale kiedyś taki list potem się czytało, do niego wracało i nawet całowało. Nie papier, ale tą najdroższą czy najdroższego, który ten list do nas skierował. Ok, so what do we find in the Bible? Is it just one book or many books? Well, the best way to think of the Bible is that it's a library of books. It's um, books, some of them written in ancient Hebrew originally, some of them written in ancient Greek um, by different authors from different times and places, but all testifying to God's plan of salvation for the human race. Czyli Pismo Święte zostało napisane w dwóch językach. So the Bible was written in Hebrew and in Greek. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, most of the Old Testament was written in Hebrew originally. A few books were written in Greek. Uh, and all of the New Testament was written in Greek because that was the uh, language that educated people wrote and spoken in, the, in those days. No. Ale bo to były języki, które wtedy były i mówione i pisane. So the best way is to read the Bible in the, or, the genuine original language, yes? Well, yeah, if you are able to. Uh -huh. uh, but luckily we have good translations in our own native languages that enable us who aren't uh, experts in, in ancient languages. We can read it that way. Najlepiej czytać Pismo Święte 
w oryginale, ale no, nie każdy jest do tego zdolny, nie mamy też czasu, to jest poważna sprawa, ale mamy dobre tłumaczenia Pisma Świętego. So, is it good when we have another translation of the Bible? Does any kind of translation bring something new, deeper? Yes, because uh, there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between words in these ancient languages and, say, Polish words or English words. Uh, so sometimes it takes several words in our language to express what's in the original. And that can be done in different ways. So it's good to have more than one translation. Although I would just warn your readers, be sure you have a translation that's been approved by the church because there are many strange translations and distorted translations out there too. Bardzo cenna uwaga wspomniał o tym, że niektóre słowa hebrajskie czy greckie nie jest łatwo przetłumaczyć na inne języki i nieraz trzeba użyć kilku słów, żeby przetłumaczyć to jedno słowo w oryginale. Dlatego każde tłumaczenie jest tutaj bardzo cenne i warto z niego korzystać. Z tym, że ponieważ są też dziwne tłumaczenia, należy mieć pewność, że jest to tłumaczenie, które zostało zaakceptowane, zaaprobowane przez Urząd Nauczycielski Kościoła. So on, on the board we, we put some names of the books from the Bible. Na tablicy wypisaliśmy kilka nazw ksiąg biblijnych, zwłaszcza tych najtrudniejszych. Dlatego chciałbym, żeby Robert nam je przeczytał i pomógł też zrozumieć, do czego odnosi się dane słowo. Pamiętajmy, że pisownia nieraz jest różna od wymowy. Co innego jest dane słowo przeczytać, bo jest je łatwiej zrozumieć, niż je zrozumieć, gdy jest mówione, nieraz z bardzo dziwnym, obcym akcentem. I have told that sometimes it's not easy to understand the English word, because it is written differently from the, from the way in which it is spoken. Mm -hmm. It is spoken, it depends on the accent. Yeah. Yeah, so we would like to hear from you good American accent uh, when you read the names of the books of the Bible. Okay, so the ones in red uh, and up to here the top two in blue, are from the Old Testament. So there's, starting at the top on the left here, Genesis. Genesis, czyli to jest Księga Rodzaju. How do you pronounce it? Uh, the, 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 the word Genesis is actually a fancy English word meaning beginning, because it's the first book in the Bible, hence it's called Genesis. Czyli oznacza także początek, ale tak nazywamy Księgę Rodzaju. And that book, of course, tells about the creation of the world and of Adam and Eve, and then the fall of Adam and Eve into sin as well. Ona mówi o początkach świata, stworzeniu człowieka, ale także upadku pierwszych rodziców. The next one, Exodus. To jest księga wyjścia. What it is it about? Exodus is a word meaning leaving or going away, right? And that's about the escape, the liberation of the Israelites from Egypt by God's power. They pass through the Red Sea, of course, and the, the sea parts, and they go through dry land to the other side and make it to the Holy Land. Na pewno zrozumieliście, że jest to księga, która mówi o, o wyjściu Izraelitów z Egiptu, także o ustąpieniu morza, It's o całej tej historii, ale w ogóle oznacza to wyjście, opuszczenie. What about the word Brexit or exit? Does yes. it have anything in common with it? Yes, it's, uh, of course, Brexit means the British exit or exodus <laughs> from the European Union. A, czyli zauważcie, że jest jakaś pokrewność między tymi słowami Brexit oraz exit and exit. Exodus, and yes, the same word, word really. Następna księga to księga Tobiasza, w której jest mowa o Archaniele, świętym Archaniele Rafale. In this book we find the Archangel Raphael. Mm -hmm. So what, how do you pronounce this book? Uh, Tobit is the way you say it. It can also be, you'll find in some English bi Bibles it will say Tobias. Tobias or Tobit. 
Tobit. Tobit, yeah. The next one? Nehemiah. To jest, to jest difficult one. Jest, jest Trudny, to. dlatego to umieściliśmy. Księga Nehemiasza. So how do you pronounce it one more time? Again, Nehemiah. And now we have a few prophets, yes? Who is a prophet? Prophets are people inspired with the word of the Lord to speak to the people of God and remind them of what God wants. Sometimes to warn them that if they keep straying from God's path, they're going to be in trouble. Czyli to są prorocy po polsku i też mówił kim są prorocy. Wiem, że oni zostali namaszczeni, aby przekazać te słowa. Czasami to były słowa trudne, mieli pokusę, żeby uciec, uciec od tej misji, ale byli wierni. So what are the names of the few prophets which we have on the board? Uh, they're here at the top of this group, Isaiah. Now, if you're in Great Britain, they say that differently. They say Isaiah, right? But in America, they pronounce it Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Right. Then Jeremiah. 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 Ezekiel. To znaczy Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, yeah. Next one. Daniel. Daniel. Znamy księgę proroka Daniela, był też w paszczy lwa. Next And then one. Amos or Amos. Księga proroka Amosa. What about this one? Proverbs. Proverbs is not a prophet, of course, but Proverbs is a, a sayings, wise sayings to help guide your life. Czyli to są, jest księga przysłów, dobrze zdana. To są powiedzenia, ale namaszczone, czyli dane od Pana Boga, które pomagają nam dobrze przeżyć życie. And then the book of Joel. I guess Joel really is a prophet, right? He should be our list of prophets too. Oczywiście Joel jest oczywiście także prorokiem, ale księga proroka Joela. One more, more time pronunciation. Joel. No to odpisownia różni się od wymowy, prawda? No ale na tym polega języka, nauka języka angielskiego. Father, just a word about the word prophets in English, in the way it's used in common English. It usually means someone who foretells the future, who predicts the future. And of course, sometimes the Old Testament prophets would do that. They would say, they would say um, from God what's going to happen, what God is going to do in the future. But prophets were not just uh, fortune tellers or telling the future. They also tell people what God's will is for the present time. O, wspomniał jeszcze, że profeci to nie są wróżki czy jasnowidze, którzy przepowiadają przyszłość, ale otrzymują często od Pana Boga wiadomości, które mają przekazać ludziom i dotyczą przyszłości, czyli mają udział wiedzy Pana Boga. What about the New Testament? Okay, here we have some New Testament books. Oops, and I made a mistake there. I put this line should not be up that high. So I'll change it right now on our board, Father, so nobody, okay. is, nobody you, is confused. You are forgiven. We okay, are, very good. <laughs> we are merciful. The first book here is Corinthians. And uh, you might know in the New Testament there are two letters of St. Paul to the church in Corinth. In English you would say they are Corinthians, people who live in Corinth. So it's 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. Czyli to jest list do Koryntia. Mamy dwa te listy znane, bo między innymi tam jest hymn o miłości, który nie tylko z okazji ślubów słuchamy, kiedy jest czytany w Kościele, ale Koryntianie to są mieszkańcy Koryntiu, Koryntu i stąd ta nazwa. What about the, the evangelists? Okay, the evangelists or the gospel writers. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Mateusz, Marek, Łukasz i Jan. To imiona czterech Evangelistów. What about the Gospels? Uh, the Gospels, the Gospels is how you would say it in English, and that of course means, well, it means the messages of good news. To znaczy dobra nowina. What about the Gospel music? Uh, gospel music is actually a particular form of music that came out of the black community in the United States, even back um, in the 19th, 18th century, when black people were enslaved in the United States, they developed a certain way of singing uh, religious music, Christian music, and, the, and that is the root of gospel music. Does it have 
anything in common with the gospel itself? Yeah, because uh, they were in, uh, of course, under oppression and suffering greatly, and they needed to remind each other of the good news, that God was still in charge, that one day he would liberate them, uh, and uh, in any case, uh, that God would lead them to heaven despite all their sufferings. Bardzo ciekawe to, co powiedział teraz, że gospel music, czyli muzyka ewangeliczna, można powiedzieć, powstała we wspólnotach ludzi o czarnym kolorze skóry, byli prześladowani, byli więzieni, i wtedy ta muzyka też wyrażała ich nadzieję, pragnienia, że jednak do Pana Boga należy ostatnie słowo. I tą nadzieją żyli i stąd mamy gospel music. Nowadays the gospel music is only the religious music, or not, not only. No, it's, it's religious music, but it's much bigger than the old, what they used to call Negro spirituals, black spiritual uh -huh. music. Now it's not confined to the black community. It's a, a huge industry and even great singers like uh, Elvis Presley would sing gospel music, right? Nawet Presley śpiewa muzykę gospel i ona w tej chwili należy do wszystkich, ale jest zawsze też muzyką religijną, czyli ma te podłoże nadprzyrodzonej i odnosi się do Pana Boga. What about the three last words? Well, let's take these two first. Hebrews and Thessalonians. These are letters in the New Testament. Uh, this one addressed to the Hebrews. Um, we sometimes say St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, but it's um, uh, Catholic scholars are not certain that St. Paul actually wrote it. It may be written by a community that was founded by St. Paul. Uh, but the, there's also the letter to the Thessalonians. The Thessalonians are people living in Thessalonica, right, in Greece. And St. Paul wrote two letters to the Thessalonians. So you'll have 1 Thessalonians and 2 thec <laughs> <second> Thessalonians. <laughs> Czyli jak usłyszycie czytanie z listu do Hebrajczyków, to trzeba pamiętać o tym słowie, a do Thessaloniczan to pamiętajcie o o tym. I ostatnia Księga Pisma Świętego, po polsku mówimy Apokalipsa. A jak po angielsku? What about the last book of the New Testament? The last book is called the Book of Revelation. And uh, it, it sometimes goes by another title as well, which we didn't write up here, called the Apocalypse. But uh, Apocalypse means, you know, the amazing things happening at the end of time. But the much more common way you'll see it in English Bibles is Revelation, the book of Revelation. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you like this lesson, but it's only a small encouragement for you to read the Holy Bible. Even if you cannot understand, you find a lot of good tra translators and they will help you, as, as you know from Robert. Thanks to the other translations, we can find out more understanding of some words. So we wish you all the best. God bless you. And could you finish with a prayer, Robert? Maybe you can do it spontaneously. Sure. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that in all that we say and all that we do, in all the words that we speak, we may be brought closer to the heart of your Son. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.